Hey friends, this is Red Specs Gaming, and welcome back to Minecraft Eternal. Uh, I think on today's episode what we're going to do is we are going to go out and uh, get some animals for the farm that we need, and we're going to work a little bit uh, starting on the Totemic um, mod. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. So, in between episodes, I, uh, I did some more work on this ship, which I'm going to show you, and I created a landing pad for it, so as you can see, it's a lot bigger again. A few things I wanted to point out specifically. One, make yourself a landing pad, because you want to make sure that wherever you're landing, it's on a good flat surface, because you get weird interactions, like if the side of this ship is touching the side of some terrain, then it's going to try and add that terrain in. Well, it won't do dirt, but if we had stone or something. And then the other thing is, I've got these sticky buffers set up kind of like landing gear on the bottom of the ship. So that when I land on my pad, the only thing that's touching the pad are these. These have to be at the lowest point. And be careful because what will happen is you'll end up having like a half slab down along here. And you won't realize because it doesn't look like it's touching the bottom. But it is touching the bottom because it's on this block level. So you'll notice all of my blocks end above the sticky buffers I end up moving this whole pad like I created a this when I built the ship and it created the pad so the other thing I wanted to show you let me get up there was the things that you can add to the ship for one there is a bed type so if you go in and do at da Vinci's and you'll see that there is a secured bed that you can build and that's just a regular bed plus some iron um, there is the steam engines which i'm going to show you and there are some gauges which i think they're just decor they might show like direction i haven't added those yet and we'll do that later on um and then there are these crates which i haven't added yet which we'll do later on and these i think are for moving animals and things on your ship you can basically attach them to the crate is the way it is so let me sleep real quick till morning let's make sure we don't have any nasty spawning around us and now with the sun coming up in the east i can show you the steam engines so steam engines are interesting if you look at the recipe they're not too hard to build they're just a bucket of water a furnace and some iron ingots and then you put them on your ship right all right so we're going to build the ship real quick let's do that now assemble it and we're going to mount it and we're going to take off here wrong button it's going down this is going up and you'll notice I'm faced the wrong way um, you'll notice how fast the ship seems to go it's not super fast right it's not the, the speediest way to travel necessarily and you can do f5 and then I can zoom out it's about as far out as we can get right there though and you can see you know we're, we're hovering around not bad but Let's um, stop the ship here. We're just floating in the, in the, over the ocean. And I'm going to align it to the blocks. That's what the align button does. We are stopped, right? Yeah, I'm just making sure. And then we're going to disassemble the ship. And now you can walk around on it. That's something I wanted to point out first off. Is, and to make sure you've got enough clearance that when you disassemble and it kicks you off, it doesn't drop you through the bottom. If you don't have enough clearance overhead, it's going to drop you through the ship when you disassemble. But this is how you can screw up and fall out of the ship on accident. So then you can walk around the ship, which you, uh, you can't do when it's built. When it's built, it's a big solid piece, and you'll just... The only way you walk on top of it, and it's like it might as well be one solid block. But if you disassemble the ship, then you can walk around on it. But again, just you have to have overhead, because if you disassemble, when it disconnects you from this entity, and become, this becomes blocks, you'll fall through. So you don't want to do that. So, you saw how fast it was before. Now, I'm going to show you something else. Uh, actually, I want to show you one thing first before we show you that. If we do this... And we take some fir wood, right? And you put it here, and you take some more, and you're going to burn it. Could be any kind of wood, really. 
And the reason I'm showing you this plays into the, the steam engines here. You need fuel, basically. So you can take this charcoal that you got from that, right? So it's burning one wood to one charcoal. And, and we're doing this specifically as if you're out in the wild, you have no coal. This is something you can do. So we're going to take the rest of this out. We have two charcoal now, right? If we take that two charcoal and throw it up in here, you get tiny charcoal. So now I've got 16 tiny charcoal. If you put the tiny charcoal back in here, same with this one here, real quick. You get eight per. And tiny charcoal means that you're only going to burn one piece of tiny charcoal per thing that you're burning in your furnace. And so basically, you can turn one stack of wood into like eight stacks of fuel is, is the point I'm trying to make. Because you can cook the, the logs using just tiny charcoal to get charcoal and those you can turn back into tiny charcoal so you're basically splitting him off into becoming eight pieces for every one of fuel and it's really super useful um, because when you're out in the wild especially when you're going to be flying around on your ship you may not have access to coal or whatever so I'm going to take this I'm going to do another stack here and I'm going to cook it with tiny charcoal until we get a bunch of that built up and then we'll be right back and I'll show you what we're going to do with the steam engine okay so we're back We've cooked a bit more of charcoal. We've got a bit more going still. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to, instead of turning these two stacks of tiny charcoal, or these two stacks of charcoal into tiny charcoal, we're going to leave them whole because they do burn longer. If you look, that's only 200 ticks, and these are 1,600 ticks. So we're going to chuck them one each into the steam engines, okay? And obviously you can get up to four stacks in there. Um, so eventually when you automate your charcoal creation, this will be nice. You can have like a tree farm that feeds into a set of furnaces that cooks it into charcoal and you'll have an unending fuel supply then, which we'll be doing at some point. That said, we can now come here and we can assemble the ship. Everything's okay. All the air balloons we got with, for the size of the ship is at 50%. I think I've read that 40% is, is where you want to have it to. If you don't have it to at least 40%, then it won't fly. But that said, let's mount the ship. And now watch, remember how fast it went last time. So now you can see is it's, it's really booking along now. And I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think if we add more steam engines that we can get it even faster, but this is still a lot faster than it was. So this is nice for traveling around the world, kind of casually taking a base of operations with you, that kind of thing. So we're gonna come over top of our landing pad here. I'm gonna slow it down. We're going to try and go down, get close to the pad here, I think we're there, and we're going to align it and disassemble. So let's see. So yeah, we're a little off to the side, but that's why I made it a wide pad so we could land. I also made sure these torches were sunk in to light up the top of this without being touchable. Because if we had a torch right here, he would maybe try to connect to this, or like right here, he would try to connect to this, and then that would cause a problem with it assembling the ship. So just some things to keep in mind. So yeah, that's that's our new travel ship, and we still need a name. I think by the time this video comes out, you guys may have already given me some ideas for names. So yeah. So one thing, looking through some of the next quests that we have to clear that's become obvious to me is that we're going to need leather for several things. So we need to go to the mainland and find some cows to bring home. Um, the other the other side of this is that we don't have leather to make the, the things to attach here for cows, so we're going to probably be making that in the field. So I've got wood here and this guy. Um, let's see how much coal we've got left here a bit. Take that coal. And let's see how much coal we use during our flight there. Not a terrible amount, so that's not bad. So we can just throw the rest of this coal in here. So we're going to head over to the mainland, get some cows. Catch you over there. These sheeps, pigs, more cows right there. Alright, stop. Line. Disassemble. Hi, cows. You got a hat. We unlocked a straw hat. So that gives us six right there. We can get back up on the ship here. Okay. 
what we're gonna do is get some of the wood that's in here. Take these. And we're going to quickly make two of these wooden crates. Well, actually, we can make one of them because that gives us three. So, and screw it. We'll make two sets. And from what I understand, <clears throat> these actually give you the ability, like I said, to bring entities with you. So I'm going to try and put, see how this works. I'm confused. How do we put these on the ship? Put them here, maybe? Yes. Like that. And we'll put them over here. Like that. And then what happens? Alright, we gotta figure out how we're gonna get a cow up here, is the catch. Um... So I think what we need to do is build a ramp up to get them up here. So let me grab some dirt real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got a nice little ramp up to the ship that I built. I'm gonna grab a cow. Come with me, cow. You're going to be the parent of a mighty nation of cows. And we lost our lead just like that. Come with me. Come on. Come on, Cowsy. Okay. We're gonna come this way. Come on. Come on, Moo Cow. Alright, and I think that captures them. That's what the, the way that works. Maybe. Okay, so the way I just read, I had to go quickly read is you're supposed to, if you bring them up on the thing, it's supposed to lock them in place like I thought. Um, come on up. Probably need to have, like, extend this out a little ways. Let me grab a quick thing of slabs. That way we can extend it out a little bit around here. Like these. Dang it. Well, let's move that. Extend that one out. Alright, so he should be locked in place there because we ran off the side of it, right? Let's take this one out real quick. Put this back. Alright. Should be able to break the lead now and he can't move. It should lock them in place right there. And then you apply a redstone signal to it to make it unlock. So he should be stuck there. We'll grab one more cow. Unless I see extras, and then we'll grab extras, because easier to get your nation of animals going. Come here, cow. Up. Yeah, come wide. Here we go. Sorry, cow. Didn't mean to hit you. Ah, so you can lead them off again with a lead, too. So, as long as they don't jump on another one, you can get them off there. So, he's... gonna be stuck in place on that, right? Let's see if we can get him to come this way. Come on. Come on, cowses. Come on, cow face. Probably right at the doorway was not a good idea for where it should go, but that's okay. Maybe if we... Come on. Come on. Dang it. He keeps getting snatched onto that one spot. Which isn't a bad thing, but... One second, I'm gonna make an adjustment. Okay, so I moved the pads off of the side of the ship there, and I placed them just below the deck here, and that way they kind of have a little 
ridge that they can fall down in. And so what I figured I should do here while we're out here is grab some pigs too. So in case going forward we need pigs, we have them. So let's grab two piggies. Come on, piggy. Gotta have all the animals at the farm. So you get to come with me. You get to start a nation of pigs. That way if we need any pork or anything else, we've got it. Come on, pig pigs. Come here. Come here, pig pig. There you go. Good pig pig. There we go. Alright. All animals captured. Two cows, two pigs, ready to go home. And before we leave, we're going to quickly grab this emerald I think I saw here. Yeah, might as well. Re-emerald, you know. Alright. Let's throw off the connectors, just in case. And shall we assemble and mount? Let's see how this goes. All pigs. Gonna be a little glitchy. Up, up, up we go. Nobody fall through. Alright. Looks like they're staying. So let's fly them home and I'll see you guys back at the house. Okay, now we're home. And we need to get these animals out of here. And it said we could pass a redstone signal. Right? So we need... Probably some sticks. So, because we're going to make a switch, what we'll do is we'll take the... That, like that. Make some sticks, put those there with some cobble. And make four levers. And we can take these levers, and I'm going to leave that stuff in here so there's supplies on the ship. Take these levers. And we need to figure out how we can pass the lever signal to it. So that, I think, removes him from being attached, maybe? Yes. Okay. We'll do the same with this pig over here. You come with me, piggy pig. Okay. We can put one there. You come with me, and then we'll put one there. So, all four animals should be unattached from the ship now. And we can take them back into the pens. And so that's how we got our animals, using the ship from the mainland. So, while we wait for our pigs and cows to multiply more, and in fact to help us make that happen a little quicker, we're going to take a look at another mod that's in the pack called Totemic. Or Toto, yeah, it's called Totemic. And we're going to start off by making the, the book for it. Though I know how to do some of this stuff, I'll, I'll show you how to make the book so you can figure out how to do this stuff. And to do that, we need just some logs and some paper to begin with. So, let's get three pieces of paper. Let's get three logs from over here. Actually, it might be six logs. And then we're going to go, and we're going to throw together the Totemic book. And I believe it's like this. And like this, and boom. Now we have the to Totempedia, it's called. So, I actually want to add this to my bookshelf, or to my library, real quick. So let's get our Akashic Tome, and let's right-click that guy, and then what is it, Shift? Shift right-click, Shift-click? Yeah, okay, so now it's the Akashic, Akashic Tome, and we're going to add to it... This guy here, I, 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 you gotta, you gotta combine them. I forget, I forget. All right, so you take that, you take that, and then you combine them, and now it's part of the library. And so now, if we look at it, boop, we can go Totempedia, and now we'll look at it. And basically, the way Totemic works is it's kind of a, 
like a tribal, an ancient tribal kind of way of doing magic, and you use music and you use totems to uh, to do things. So we're going to start with the basics, and the basics we need um, is actually we need a, a, a whittling knife. So if we take a look in here at the whittling knife, that just needs all of that. It's just some sticks, a piece of iron, and a flint. Boom! Now I've got a whittling knife. And then we're going to get some logs, because we're going to whittle out of logs. So let's take like two stacks of logs. Okay, so now that we have our whittling knife, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come out here, <clears throat> and we're going to place down two logs on either side like this. And actually what I want to do is I want to go around the fence and I want to do the same thing every five logs I believe it is or every five spots so with this one we're gonna actually start on the third just to make sure and let me go around real quick and throw these down everywhere and I'll be right back with you okay so I've gone ahead and I've placed specific or totems at specific places or not totems they're not totems yet they're logs at specific places all along the fence and I'll explain why we went with the spacing that we did here uh, the first thing you want to do though is with this totem whittling knife, if you hold shift and you right click, you'll cycle through different totems you can carve. And so we're looking for the base to start with. And every totem pole has to start with a base. So we're going to run around real quick, add that to all the bases. And now that we have a base on all of them, we're going to do shift right click again. We're going to go ocelot this time. It's the one I want. So one more time around, um, except for this, the direction of which you place them, or that you carve them, the face, that's the face that the totem's going to face, and because if you're like me, you want this to be, um, like look nice, then you want to make sure you're, you're paying attention to the face that you're carving on it. If you carve on the right, it's going to look to the right. If you carve forward in front of you, it's going to look forward in front of you. Me, I want my ocelot totems looking out. That doesn't really matter to the overall way they work, but just for look. So these ones are going to be a little weird. I think we're going to face all of these out this way. back facing this way on these. Okay, so why did we do that, you say? Well, the reason we did that is that totem poles give different effects. And depending on the, you see how you cycle through different animals? Depending on the animal you put on the totem, you get different effects. So effectively, this one, what this does is within five blocks of a totem pole that has an ocelot on it, a creeper cannot explode. So this is one, two, three. This is one, two, three. We have some crossover in the middle. And so I tried to place all of these so there's some crossover, even if it's one block. So this would be one, two, three, four, five. And then from here, one, two, three, four, five, there's crossover. So all of them kind of cross over each other's range of effect. And I put them all on my fence. That way, if I'm inside working and a creeper wanders up to my fence real close to me, and I don't realize he's back there, he cannot explode. And he won't mess up all my hard work here. So that's why we put those on there. I wanted to show you an example of what the ocelot will do for you. He tried. He filled himself up there, but he just can't finish the job. Because the ocelot won't let him. Poor dude. So I think that's where we're going to call it. Um... We got a little bit of a start on Totemic. I showed you the the uh, most important one, the Ocelot one, in my opinion. Some of the others are nice, and there's some other things that we can do with Totemic, which we'll play with in the next episode. Um, and you saw how the uh, Da Vinci ships can work really well for you. Um, I've heard tell that it's not great on servers, but we'll be trying that on my stream, so we'll see how well it plays on our server. Um, and anyways... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like that, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, please. And then come on over and see me at 
twitch.tv slash redspecsgaming. And we're there uh, five nights a week from 7 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.